It's the final match of top eight of the 2016 Pokemon World Championships. After an entire year of competing and qualification, there were just six players left that might be crowned world champ. And one of them is about to make the biggest misplay of their entire career. Two of the top four players have already been decided. Wolf Glick and Marcus Dodder will play a six Pokemon mirror in top four, which would turn into one of the most infamous sets in VGC history. The third player will either be Barry Anderson or Jonathan Evans, who you can see in the background of today's video. They will play the winner of this match between Barris Akos, better known as Billa, and Eduardo Cunha, better known as Edu. Nowadays, both of these players are incredibly well established, but at the time, this was David versus Goliath. While Edu was known in the Pokemon community for his presence on the Nugget Bridge forums, his high ladder placements, and his success in the National Pokemon Association, he was still lacking in real life results. For the first time in his career, he had qualified for Day 1 Worlds, on the back of a top 32 regional performance and impressive local results. This was not the profile of someone you'd expect to be in top cut of worlds, but an undefeated run through day one qualified him for the second stage of the competition, and the next thing you know, here we are. Since then, he's won a regional championship, an international championship, and most recently, the 2022 Pokemon World Championships. So this was only the beginning of his story, but what a start it was. On the other hand, this was Billa's fourth World Championship appearance, with his highest finish being a top 16 finish in 2013. He had multiple regional top cuts, as well as multiple national top cuts up to this point, both in his home country of Germany, as well as in Italy and the UK. His most recent performance was a second place finish at the South African National Championships, which despite a tiny player base, awarded championship points like every other national championship, and allowed Billa to guarantee his automatic invite to Day 2 of the World Championships in 2016. The following year onwards, South Africa would have its own separate qualification structure, and as far as I know, this was the reason why. Regardless, this was a veteran player that everyone knew and no one wanted to face. The team Billa is using is one that you have probably seen before. While Marcus and Wolf were gearing up to play the six Pokemon Mirror, Billow was hoping to be the third player to pilot this exact same team to a top four finish. That result would seem unprecedented. The last time we saw three of the top four players at the World Championship using the same team was, well, the previous year. But other than that, it has never happened and likely never will again. The world was entirely unprepared for this specific variant of Rayquaza Kyogre except for one person. Edu was maybe the last person to have a chance at stopping this team from winning Worlds. The other potential semifinalists had both lost to this team earlier in the tournament, and if you're familiar with VGC history, you know that Jonathan Evan did not fare much better in the Grand Finals. Wolf had 2-0'd both of his previous opponents in top cut, and Marcus also 2-0'd the previously unbeaten Aaron Trailer in top 8. But Edu, Edu was up a game. And it looked like he could pull the upset. But in this second game, things were looking grim. Here's the situation. There are 7 minutes left in this game, nearly half of the allocated 15 minutes per battle. Edu is down to his final two Pokemon, a Groudon at half health and a Mega Kangaskhan at much less than that. Billa had a paralyzed Mega Gengar at full health, a Kyogre at just over half health, and a Rayquaza in the back that had just over half health as well. Although Desolate Land is currently active, nullifying water attacks and strengthening fire attacks, the Rayquaza's airlock will be able to neutralize that advantage. If you are Billa, this is about as good a situation as you can hope to be in. But, if you saw the title of this video, you can probably guess what happens next. But you certainly couldn't guess how it goes down. This is one of the most interesting endgames in BGC history. Here's how Edu can still win. On this turn, both players make a safe and what I would call optimal play. Because the Gengar is paralyzed, the Kangaskhan is the fastest thing on the field. With Double Edge, it does a minimum of 126 HP to this Kyogre, a guaranteed knockout. While we don't know the Kangaskhan's exact HP stat, it would take a maximum of 22% from recoil, which it should live easily. It would also KO a potential Rayquaza switch-in. So it makes sense that Kyogre went for Protect this turn. 
Furthermore, that Fire Punch from Groudon will always knock out Gengar. Notably, Fire Punch has a 48% chance to 2-hit KO a Rayquaza Switchin, not including its 10% chance to burn it or a chance to get a critical hit. So while Billa could have switched Gengar to Rayquaza this turn, that would turn the game into a virtual coin toss, and those odds are far worse than his odds as it stands right now. For Edu to win, he has to call this next turn correctly and maybe get a little lucky. The big question on this turn is whether or not Kangaskhan is in range of Rayquaza's extreme speed. Keep in mind, this Rayquaza cannot Mega Evolve and boost its attack stat because the Gengar had Mega Evolved earlier in the game. As such, this extreme speed will do between 26 to 31% to Kangaskhan, and that is right on the edge of where it is right now. In Generation 6, the HP bar has 48 pixels. By my count, 14 of those pixels are yellow, or 29%, with a margin of error of about 2% in either direction. This is almost definitely a damage roll. But Billa did not have time to count individual pixels, nor did he necessarily have a better, safer play available to him. He clicks extreme speed and the Kangaskhan survives. However, Edu did not make the correct read this turn. Kangaskhan clicks double edge into the Kyogre, which of course knocks it out, and then the Groudon clicks substitute. Both of these plays were potentially game losing. So let's rewind. Kangaskhan ideally would have targeted Rayquaza. Of course, there was a chance that Kangaskhan got knocked out by the extreme speed, but in that case, Edu could never win the game, and therefore it wasn't even worth considering. If Kangaskhan KOs the Rayquaza and goes down to recoil damage, the best Billa's Kyogre can do is 2-hit KO the Groudon with Ice Beam because Airlock is no longer in play. And Groudon's single target Precipice Blades has a 94% chance to knock out Kyogre from this HP stat. Accounting for the chance of it missing, that play gives Edu about an 80% chance of winning the set if he targets Rayquaza. The only scenario where attacking Kyogre is correct is if you make the hard read that Rayquaza is clicking protect this turn. But what about the substitute? The commentators at the time hailed it as a moment of brilliance, but in reality it should have been the game losing play. You see, Rayquaza does not one hit KO this Groudon, doing a maximum of 43% with Dragon's Ascent. Groudon's Fire Punch does between 46 to 55 HP to this Rayquaza, giving it a 48% chance to 2 hit KO it. Including a 10% chance to burn on each hit, if Edu clicked Fire Punch he would have had about a 58% chance to win the game. That's worse than the 80% chance he could have had if he attacked Rayquaza with Kangaskhan, but still quite favorable. The only situation in which Substitute would have been better is if Rayquaza went for Protect. Oh, I really like that the play. The Substitute. I really like that play because now, if you want to for sure break that Substitute, you're going to have to go for the Dragon, Dragon Ascent and lower that mm -hmm. defense. So I On the biggest stage, Edu had just made a hard read and called it absolutely wrong. Now, all Billa has to do is click Dragon's Ascent twice, and it will always knock out this Groudon. The only situation in which this doesn't win the game is with a critical hit Fire Punch from Groudon to knock out their Rayquaza, a Fire Punch Burn on their Rayquaza, or a Double Protect. Now, you might be asking, how would a Double Protect give Edu the win? And to explain that, we have to talk about timer rules. But keep in mind that we still have 4 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. That's a full 30% of the original game timer. And this only comes into play if that clock hits 0. Surely, two Pokemon with a combined 70% of their HP won't take 4 and a half minutes to finish their battle, right? But just in case, I'll explain. Unlike in Generations 7 and 8, there was no individual player time in VGC matches. Each player, of course, had 45 seconds to choose their move or switch in, but they could take that time every turn with no penalty. Of course, there was an overall match timer that started at 15 minutes and counted down. And with the time-consuming Mega Evolution and Primal Reversion animations, it was not unusual for this to hit zero in VGC 2016. And once it hit zero, the player with the most Pokemon remaining won the game. If both players have the same number of Pokemon remaining, it came down to the percentage of total HP remaining. 
To explain what that means, I'll give you an example. Let's say the game were to end right now. Billa would have 102 HP out of a total 181 from Rayquaza, 207 from Kyogre, 150 from Gengar, and 157 from Hitmontop for a total of 14.7%. If we assume that Edu's Groudon is at 20% HP, then Edu would have 5.6% of his total HP remaining. Notably, this does not count Pokemon that you do not bring to the set, only the four that you choose to bring to this game. Of course, this game is not over yet. There are 270 seconds left on the clock. Assuming there are 45 seconds of animations, that leaves a full four turns of game remaining. And on the fifth turn, either player can take all 45 seconds of their time, run the clock to zero, and the game would end. In other words, Edu could protect, then attack, then get two consecutive protects, and if the 33% chance of a successful double protect rolls in his favor, he would win the game. However, after the first protect, another line opens up for Billa. You see now, Billa can also opt to run the clock out. He could protect, then attack, then protect, and the clock would hit zero if either player chose to let it. But to do that, he would have to be really confident that even after a fire punch, he would have the higher HP stat. He would be foregoing a two-thirds chance of winning the game just to take this line. And just to be clear, there is no other justification for clicking protect in this situation, at least that I could find. So of course, this is the line that he chooses to go for. So now let's do some math. At neutral, Fire Punch is doing between 46 to 55 HP to this Rayquaza. Given the HP stats of the other Pokemon on the team, that means that he would have between 6.7 to 8.1% of his HP remaining. Edu's total HP stat is 727, which means the threshold for him to win would be between 50 and 59 HP remaining on his Groudon, depending on the Fire Punch damage roll. Groudon's HP stat is 207. And by my count, 12 of the 48 pixels on Groudon's health bar are currently yellow, meaning its HP stat is 52, with a margin of error of 4 points in either direction, between 48 and 56. This should come down to another damage roll. Edu will click Fire Punch this turn. He has no reason not to. He should then start praying to the deity of his choice. Billa can click any number of moves, and it would not matter in the slightest. My personal favorite here is Swords Dance. It is the most stylish option. The objectively correct move is Protect, since a triple Protect, however unlikely, would also win him the set. He could also click Extreme Speed either into his opponent or his long-gone partner. He could even click Dragon's Ascent into his already knocked out Kyogre, which would make it fail, and that would make no difference. Five options, all of which send the game to the unforgiving hands of the random number generator. And one option, just one, that takes it into his own hands and immediately and consistently loses him the game. And that's the option he goes for. Dragon's Ascent is an incredibly powerful move, with only one easy-to-forget downside, which is that it drops your defensive stats. And that drop gave Edu just enough damage to pull ahead in total HP and in hindsight resulted in what is, in my opinion, the single funniest pop-off in VGC history. The remaining 90 seconds were merely a formality and Eduardo Cunha would move on to top four of the 2016 Pokemon World Championships. If you liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe for more competitive VGC content. One remaining, and then after that, it's going to be who has the total percentage of hit points remaining from the team, and then after that, it's just whoever has the highest hit point number. Yeah. And three seconds till two, time one, one, and zero. that is it. Time who is has here. one game two? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? I, I think it might be Eduardo. Oh, it's going to be so it? close. Time has run out. The battle is over. Eduardo! Eduardo takes it! Portugal! Portugal advances to the top four.